Multiply. 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 We want the church to, to, to really start to understand that, that the kingdom of God is so much bigger than our local church. It's so much bigger than our city. It's so much bigger than our state. And that together we can do so much to accomplish what God wants to do. I think part of what we're asking people to commit to on the multiplication side when it specifically relates to the Cultivating Congregation Initiative is to flip the question. I think for quite some time, most of our churches have wrestled with, should we multiply? And I think what we're challenging people to wrestle with now is, how should we multiply? It's not should we, but it's how should we? To flip the question? Mm -hmm. Well, they just have to do it. I mean, you have to take that first step. You have to say, this is who we are. We've changed our DNA. It's a change in DNA that we're not going to be territorial. We're not going to say, this is ours and you can't have it, or, or it's got to happen here in this state or in this city. But we want to see God's will be done wherever we can make it happen. And it's really a broadening of, of our understanding of God doing great things. He's greater than our states. He's greater than our local cities. He's great. And we want to do something great for God, and we can do it together. Um. I think you have to change the question of, that we're asking. And the question that we've wrestled with, for the most part, whether we've said it out loud or not, is how do we survive? How do we get to next weekend? How do we get to next year? How do we get to the next camp meeting? How do we get to next state assembly? Um, we're trying to say that's not the question to be wrestling with. The question to be wrestling with is, God, how do you want us to impact our community? How do you want us to help create campuses and churches and places where people who are far from God can find their way back to Him. You know, at some point we have to make a decision that says we're no longer going to just chat about should we multiply. That question was answered in Scripture 2,000 years ago. The question that's facing us now is how are we going to do what we all know good and well God called us to do? You know, from the beginning God said be fruitful and multiply and he, while He was speaking to the first man and woman the same is true for the church, to be fruitful and multiply. So I don't think it's, 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 it doesn't seem to me that it's really an option if we're going to be faithful. I wish we had a soul burden. I wish that we had a burden inside of us that was a conviction where we can't sleep, we can't eat, we can't drink, we can't do anything unless we go out there and win people for Jesus Christ. You need to, to think through the names and the stories. Um, that, that it's more than just how many people can we reach for Christ, but it really is. There are individual stories that will be changed forever. There will be individual families that will be changed forever. There will be individual com communities, maybe not our own one that we live in now, but the communities that, that we pour into that are going to be transformed by this experience with Christ. And so it's not just a number or a metric that we track. But these are people's lives and families and eternities that are being transformed. The statistics in America today are that, that, uh, that about 1% of all churches in America are dying every year. And uh, so if we don't replace those churches, uh, we're, we're in deep trouble uh, because the church will continue to decline. The message of the gospel will continue to be softened. So, so we want to start new congregations. Uh, the statistics were given to us today that in a new congregation, in a new church plant, uh, about 10% of the people per year are saved. It will come to Christ. Where in a in a in a, church, in a regular church, it's only one to two percent of the people uh, who attend that church come to Christ, and so it's a much more effective way to reach lost people through uh, through church planting, through church multiplication. I think it's just a commitment to do what God's asked us to do. And there are a lot of different ways we can do that. There are a lot of different levels at which we can commit, and we need every one of those levels. It's that example of the body of Christ. Some need to pray, some need to give, some need to serve, some need to go but we all need to be working together toward what God has been working toward since the creation of the world, reconciling humanity in relationship to Himself. Will you commit to pray and pray that God would do something powerful again through the Church of God here in the Midwest? Would God visit us again and would God embolden us to be the people He has called us to be? Secondly, I believe that we as church congregations need to begin to set aside funds so that we can help support those persons who might come and uh, come forth in our congregations and give themselves up to this new venture. Third, would you be willing 
to give yourself and give your leadership, some of your leadership, so that uh, they might be released to go out and plant a new church, just like the Antioch church that put their hands on Paul and Barnabas. There are some people in our congregations that are ready to go out. They're ready to plant, and they need your blessing to do that. Oh, hands down, the biggest risk is not to multiply. Because if you're not multiplying disciples and multiplying ministries and multiplying churches, then eventually you're going to die. And unfortunately, a lot of churches think that playing it safe will perpetuate their life, when in fact, playing it safe actually costs them their life. And it kind of goes back to what Jesus said. When we try to save our lives individually or collectively as a church, when we try to save it, we lose it. But if we're willing to give it up and take a risk and invest it in the kingdom, that's when the fruit multiplies. Well, if we don't multiply, one day we're going to stand before our Creator and He's going to say, why? Why? Why wouldn't you sacrifice just a little for me? Why wouldn't you push yourself just a little for me? Why wouldn't you step out for me? Why wouldn't you embrace the very people that I love so much that I died for? I died for those people and you turned your back on them. Why? I think that would be the saddest thing. He's not going to say, you can't come in. But he's going to say, why? And we got to ask ourselves that right now. I mean, why won't we sacrifice for the very people he died for? And until we're ready to answer that question, we have no business doing church. We really don't. Um, church is not a place um, where we go just to feel good about ourselves. It's a place where we go so that we can help others in the journey. And we've got to be growing. And if we are not growing, we've got to ask ourselves why.